Welcome to our Tuesday night Bible, our Tuesday night Bible study. For those that's online and those that's on the conference call, I'll be reading Psalms 91 from the the NIV, the new the NIV verses one through five from Psalms 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadows of the Almighty. I, will, I say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortunes, my God and whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the thunder's snail and from the deadly pre precisely. He will cover He will cover you with His feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear you will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day. I just read Psalms 91 verses 1 through 5 um, for our prayer. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us on today, Lord. Thank you for waking us up, Lord, on the day that we have, on, on this day, Lord. Thank you for keeping us throughout, throughout all the day, Lord. And thank you for bringing us here on tonight, Lord. As the teacher come up to teach us to our Bible study on tonight, Lord, bless, bless her as she be teaches, Lord, and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I would like to welcome you guys on tonight. I teach you on this evening. A good teacher. Our own from Greater Faith. She's a kingdom builder, and she also a good Sunday school teacher. I would like to welcome y'all up, Minister Audrey Williams. Amen. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday evening Greater Faith Bible Study. Amen? All right, so our context this evening is going to be about, well, I'll tell you, I was doing my thought process when I was putting this together was to find ways that the devil attacks us physically, okay? Because I was thinking like, gosh, you know my my sister who's a woman of God, my friends who's a woman of God, myself who's a woman of God, our pastor who's a man of God, and just everywhere around it, it seems like the devil is always on us physically. Amen? So I wanted to see if I could find some evidence of why the enemy was always able to attack us physically. Amen? Uh, so... As I began to look through things, the first thing I wanted to figure out is why or when did Lucifer fall? Amen? Mm -hmm. All right, so which led me to Ezekiel 28, verses 13 through 19. I'm going to read those first for y'all. Amen? All right, so think about who Lucifer was. He was a beautiful angel. Amen? He was the head of worship. But he got a little full of himself. But anyway, let me tell you what the scripture says. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. <laughs> All right. Ezekiel 28, 13 through 19. Amen. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Your clothing was adorned with every precious stone. Red carnelian, pale green peridot, white moonstone. Doesn't that sound pretty, y'all? Blue, blue green barrel, onyx, green jasper. Blue lapis, lazuli, turquoise, and emerald, all beautifully crafted for you and set in the finest gold. They were given to you on the day you were created. I ordained and anointed you as a mighty angelic guardian. You had access to the holy mountains of God and walked among the stones of fire. Y'all ever thought about that? What it was like for him before? He got 
all full of himself. Amen. <laughs> you were blameless in all you did from the day you were created until the day evil was found in you. Mm. Your rich commerce led you to violence and you sinned. So I banished you in disgrace from the mountain of God. I expelled you, O oh mighty guardian, from the place among the stones of fire. Your heart was filled with pride. By your love of, I'm sorry, your heart was filled with pride because of all of your beauty. Your wisdom was corrupted by your love of splendor. So I threw you to the ground and exposed you to the curious gaze of kings. You defiled your sanctuaries with the many sins and your dishonest trade. So I brought fire out from within you, and it consumed you. I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the sight of all who were watching. All who knew you are appalled at your fate. You have come to the terrible end, and you will exist no more. Amen? Wow. <clears throat> Anybody ever read that passage and, and said, look what he, where Lucifer was and where he ended up? Amen? He said, pride cometh before the fall. That's what the word says. Amen? Amen? So sometime between the angels being created, and again, Satan was created, and a lot of people think that he was his own Right? But God created him. Amen? So sometime between the angels being created and the tempting in the garden, that's where Lucifer fell. Amen? Mm -hmm. And Bishop's been talking about that somewhere between one and three yeah. was when he fell. Amen? All right. So let's see here. John 1 and 15 talks about, this is a message that we heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. So that kind of goes back to what I was saying about how the devil attacks us, just generally speaking, whether it's physically or whether it's emotionally. Amen? So why does God allow evil was the next question that kind of came about. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions? We can make this interactive tonight. Mm -hmm. Why does God allow evil? Why did God allow evil? Because our God is a God of love. Amen? He's full of mercy and compassion, especially doing when we're not the greatest of believers, right? Or even before we were his children, per se. Although he created us and he wanted us to be with him, we still had to make the decision to accept his son, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So the Bible says anyone who practices sin belongs to the evil one. Because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Mm. And that's found in 1 John 3 and 8. The devil was the first occurrence of evil. Amen? Mm -hmm. So I have a question about it. Bishop, what would you say in answer to that? That the devil was the first occurrence of evil. So obviously that was before Adam and Eve fell. So would you agree with that? Disagree with that? We don't know. We don't know. Right? Okay. But again, just something to, to think about. I can look around the room like, hmm, mm -hmm. things that make you go, hmm, like Arsenio said, right? And the Bible also talks about that there is a mystery about evil. The Bible describes it as the mystery of iniquity in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 7. The dictionary, Merriam-Webster, defines iniquity as a gross injustice and wickedness. Anybody agree, disagree with that? We could probably add some people's names <laughs> and some occurrences as well to that, right? Okay, amen? So that led to some of the ways that the enemy attacks, amen? So think about your life, all right? When he comes to you, it's usually after what? One of those occurrences, how about after a great spiritual experience, okay? All right. So let's get, let me give you an example. So after Jesus had been baptized, just he had come up from the water. Suddenly the Hutton's had opened up. Amen. Okay. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove. Okay. And then a voice from heaven said, this is my son 
the beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Mm -hmm. Amen? <laughs> right after. Mm -hmm. So that's found in Matthew 3 and 16. Okay? So think about after a great spiritual experience. So after you've, you've come from church, amen? Mm -hmm. Getting right? ready to go to church. Getting ready to go to church. How about coming back from a retreat mm -hmm. that you'd have been on with your church folk? We're not church folk, but your church members mm -hmm. or other believers, right? He always seems to attack in some way. Debit card stolen, mm -hmm. right? A family member calls you up talking trash, or it might mm -hmm. even be some type of tragedy. Amen? Spending time in your prayer closet. How about as soon as you walk out of your prayer closet, something's mm -hmm. right there in your face. Mm -hmm. Amen? Praying or fasting, right at the end of that season, there the devil is, right there waiting mm -hmm. to snatch away what God has presented you with. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? All right. Um, what about at the beginning of a new spiritual endeavor? That's another way that the enemy attacks. So let me give you an example. Satan will also attack when someone is beginning a new quest mm -hmm. spiritually. Right after Jesus was attacked by the devil, he began his public ministry. Mm. Think about that. Right before it was time for him to open up what God has set aside for him. Amen? Mm -hmm. Think about that. Probably right before Deaconess, you became a Deaconess. Mm -hmm. I bet your world was turbulent, right? Mm -hmm. Bishop, I'm sure on your way to... <laughs> you've talked about many times your trip from Louisiana to Orlando to Gainesville. Amen? He was all up in your business. But actually, that was my fault. Well, okay. Because I chose okay. to tell God to wait. Okay. All right. Y'all heard that? He chose to tell God to wait. But I bet you, Bishop, even if you hadn't chose God to wait, you still probably would have had some element of the enemy. Because the evidence is in this room. Amen. And the yes, evidence I would, have, I would have had some warfare. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. As they say, new levels, new devils, right? So let's say you're teaching a new class at church starting a new Bible study group, okay? That you're trying to do some type of um, learning a new new study in your Bible. So at any time that you start a new spiritual endeavor, the enemy always seems to be right there to attack. Amen? Amen. 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 And I know that for those of us who've been walking with the Lord for quite some time, a lot of times we don't even recognize it anymore because we're just so used to praying it out and okay. we just do what we do, what we do, and we just keep going, right? Or we almost immediately recognize that it is spiritual warfare mm -hmm. and we call it that and we pray it forward from that. But we, think about the folks. Go ahead. We um, expect Elder. it. So, yes, you so expect it. Absolutely. Expect it. You expect so, it. You know, we, we do the pre thing, you know. Like, mm -hmm. And, and even Bishop has said it to the congregation as a whole. Mm -hmm. Y'all know we're getting ready to expect yeah. the attack. Y'all right. know yeah. exactly. right. you're going somewhere, mm -hmm. so expect the attack. You know, right. and Bishop warned us at times like that too mm -hmm. to yep. prepare. Right, sorry. Mm -hmm. To prepare, get, get your prayers right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just like when we have our fast every year. Has there not been a year that we were not under something? Oh, yes. I mean, if it wasn't one of us, it was 10 of us, it was mm -hmm. 20 of us, everybody seemed to be going through something at that point in time. So those are another way that the enemy attacks at the beginning of a new spiritual endeavor. Mm -hmm. And, a, you know, a fast, a corporate fast certainly falls into that category. Amen? So some spiritual, oh, I'm sorry, some scriptural background for that is Matthew 4 and 17, okay? From the time that Jesus began to re proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near, amen? He was underneath that type of attack from the enemy. Another way that the enemy attacks is when we are physically vulnerable. Okay? And this is the one that I was really trying to find, you know, some scriptural evidence but, I mean, I think each and every one of us in our life experience have come across this, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you get, you get a cold, and all of a sudden that cold turns into COVID or the pneumonia or something like that, right? Or if you are not, because you are physically weak, 
Okay, he's looking for that open, that opening, right? So, well, she's down, her energy is down, his energy is down. So I'm gonna pounce on them, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of times that happens while you're fast. While yeah. you're, that's right, he exactly. Will come while you're fast. Yes, ma'am. You know, well, a, a good example natural. is Jesus in the wilderness. Yep. Jesus in the wilderness. He, absolutely. He waited. Yep. Mm -hmm. He waited until he was about the end. That's, about, that's right. Because think about that. 40 oh, days. I mean, we know that Jesus was God, right? Yeah. We know that. But think about that. 40 days, right? No food or water. You, I, I'd be bouncing off the walls. Yeah, I'd, I'd, be I'd, I'd be dead. dead. I'd be dead. dead. I would be dead. dead. But you understand what I'm saying? Because you know it says you can't go seven days without only you know, only God. Well, people have tried it and it succeeded. Mm -hmm. but, but they were a little jacked up after the fact, right? But, but when you're weak physically, you know, catching a cold, stress, anger, even bitterness, mm -hmm. he can hit you right then too, right? Yes. Especially when someone that you love and care about is maybe sick mm -hmm. or going through something. Mm -hmm. You ever, you know, you know, people that have, seems like they have uh, attack after attack after okay. attack yeah. after attack, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't even cut them a break. They don't even get time to pray. It seems like, amen. But that is one way that the enemy will certainly he will he will pounce, like oh, I said yes, earlier, yeah. on you again and again and again, mm -hmm. amen. Uh, let's see. Let me okay, let me flip in my pages. All right. Let's see number four. Being yeah, physically vulnerable. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about remembering that we are victorious. Okay, so when you're attacked, I know in my humanness, I was talking about this in Sunday school, I, the first thing we typically do in our humanness is we react. And then we get our faith in check and then we respond. But think about when you're going through something, are you thinking, oh, I'm victorious through Christ, through Jesus Christ. Are you thinking that? Sometimes, but most of a lot of times, no. A lot of times, no. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, David is a, a a prime example of that. I don't know that he was thinking that he was victorious when he was being chased by Saul, mm -hmm. right? Okay, and and another thing too, he will often attack when we are alone, mm -hmm. when we feel like we're alone, whether we're physically alone or we feel like we're emotionally alone. Amen. He will certainly step all up in it. Mm -hmm. So think about some of the things that I'm going to go back to David. David was alone when he saw Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> Eve was alone. Okay. When he said, oh, you will not surely die. She was by herself at that point in time. Point. No, she wasn't. Not, at, not when he said he was surely dying. He was with her. He was with her. Okay. No, so. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. I I thought. Okay. All right, y'all. Y'all. Okay. Anyway, but I guess emotionally, maybe she was alone because we talked about Bishop had talked yeah, about her no that she wasn't sure. correct. So, all right. So let's see. Um, Elijah is another Probably. example of when he was running. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So those are the times when. He can sneak in. I mean, it's easy enough. I, you know, I've, I've told people this before. It's like, don't, don't open the door to the enemy. You know, if he's going to come in, you make him climb in mm -hmm. through the window, right? Mm -hmm. So you make him work for it, is what I'm saying, uh, in, in your lives. So, but these instances of people in the Bible, just like with us, you know, they were, they were not in the best place I don't know if you want to say emotionally, but they were not in the best place spiritually. spiritually. And they were certainly not thinking, oh, I am vi victorious. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay? Amen? Well, he, he uh, tried to get, you know, mess with me before I got here. Okay. You know, I got my mother-in-law. She would be 94 Friday, God, which stay our life. But anyway, you know, she's <laughs> with us right now. Right. And, you know, I'm taking care of her and everything. And, you know, you get a little tired. You know, I've been running around all day, you know, mm -hmm. doing stuff. So he tried to tell me, oh, you're too tired to go to Bible study. You stay home. <laughs> right. You know. I, exactly. 
Sit up there and thought about it. I said, you know what? I'm not that tired. I'm going to be sitting out in Bible study like I'll be sitting home on this couch. That's so right. I'm watching watch TV. Bible study. You know? Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay, and then that actually brings and me to And I was it. alone, you know. And you were alone. My Absolutely. Mama was, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm alone. You know, I cook and everything, you know, before I get here and everything. Okay. And you tried to tell me, you know, you're too tired to go to Bible study, you know. Okay. Right. Well, another another way that he attacks us in that kind of that same along those same lines from an unexpected source. Mm-hmm. Okay, you weren't expecting, you know, like a a, um, a friend or a coworker, you know, people that are close to you. Mm-hmm. Right. You have an expectation that they're going to be supportive mm-hmm. of you, but those are oftentimes the people that hurt you the most. That they hurt you the right? most. We talked Amen. about church hurt, right? Amen. And we talked about you. You know, you hear about sisters and brothers and mm-hmm. families that duel all the time okay amen and so our faith or our the way that we understand or come together and know who god is Mm -hmm. right that is how we how we are effective in our warfare Mm -hmm. okay because i didn't want to necessarily dig into spiritual warfare that wasn't my intention but you do kind of have to go into a look because it is spiritual warfare but i mean my goal was certainly not that particular subject, but to to tip on how it kind of begins, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So a couple of types of spiritual attack uh, is like we what we've been talking about when you're sick, when you're tired, is a physical attack, mm-hmm. right? So um, Satan attacked Job's health. Okay. Oh, yeah. His crops. His animals, family. his family, everything, 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 everything mm-hmm. right? Okay. Um, another way that he attacks us, and I'm, we're all, all quite familiar with this, is mental. Mm-hmm. Okay, going back to the garden, you know, right there with Eve. Um, he questioned, or he had her question God's goodness, I think, mm-hmm. and who he was as God, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he also tempted uh, Jesus, right? With the stones about turning them into into bread mm-hmm. and then throwing himself <laughs> from the top from of the, the top temple. Of the Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> right? Amen. Y'all out there, Facebook land, or all that. Come on now. I mean, but but this is what, and, and we sit here and we kind of chuckle about, you know, the silly things that Satan does. Right, but we've all fallen for the okey doke, oh, yes, we have. haven't we? Mm-hmm. Right, the simplest mm-hmm. of things. You know, you hear about somebody, you know, said you think somebody said something in, at church, mm-hmm. right? Or you heard, you know, you were at the beauty parlor and somebody talking about something. They weren't even talking to you, yeah. okay? Yeah. But you have created this whole story mm-hmm. in your mind. Yeah. That's how the enemy attacks. Mm-hmm. Just like that. Just, just like that. And I was telling you the other day when I thought my car was broken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? And that wasn't even it. Thank, thank the Lord that I that I found what I was looking, looking for. for yeah. But but that's how quickly we can we can change jump trajectory. To jump <laughs> to conclusion. And and again, the the, the enemy the he is worse, yeah. yeah, and he is simple, right? He mm-hmm. does some complex things, but he does some real simple things. You know, just planting the simple seed. Because yeah. all he has, all he has to create is a little bit of doubt. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have to create a lot of doubt. Just a little. All bit. he has to be a little bit mm-hmm. of doubt. Amen. Because y'all know we start out with one thing and it ends up. You know that story where you tell someone a story here at the it beginning goes, and it goes <laughs> around and it's completely different. Yeah. Different people's names, <laughs> right? Yeah. Different, different people's, you know, locations in a different state. Not even to save people, you know, all of that. But again, that's all that the enemy has has to plant is a little bit of doubt, and he certainly messes with our mind. Oh, and yeah. going back to the physical part, okay, when you laying in bed and you got a hundred and two, uh, you know, degrees freak fever, right? You know, you might be be hallucinating oh, just yeah. because you took too much Nyquil, right? But he would certainly take that opportunity to. Put something in your ear. ear. Put something in your ear, right? (laughs) Like, you know, oh, you know, your friend. You know, what did she say about you? What did she say? What did he say? What did your husband do? What what did he do? What did your wife say? What they didn't say? Mm -hmm. Amen. So he is always on it. Going back to to the mental. Um, with Peter, he actually tempted him to worry about what people would think Mm -hmm. and to focus on his own safety. 
rather than being there for Jesus. Amen? You ever think about it that way? Hmm. Amen? So, the devil is a... We know that he's slick. He's definitely, definitely slick. Okay? So, I'm going to go over ten signs of spiritual attack. Uh oh <laughs> Here we go, y'all. Ten signs. Ten signs, and there's way more than ten, I'm sure, but these were the ten that I was able to find. And keeping in mind that spiritual warfare is is more common than we think, because we yeah, don't always yeah. label it warfare, do we? Right. We just label it life. That's, when you're under spiritual attack, you got spiritual warfare. Absolutely. <laughs> right? You don't want to call it that, but that's what it is. But that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. But we don't want but we don't want to title it that either. We want to just say, oh well that's just life. Well, like you said, very very well Period. There is no in between. It's not super duper. You don't need a college degree to understand that. Amen. Alright, so first sign of a spiritual attack. Feeling discouraged, defeated. And depressed. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, All right. Things seem hopeless, overwhelming, and burdensome. Mm -hmm. You feel an overall sense of disappointment. You struggle with a lack of peace and feeling stress. You feel like giving up. Right? Amen. 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 Now, a lot of times you just feel like that's life. You're like, my life is busy. It's this or that. I'm weighed down from all the stuff. Amen? But again, feeling discouraged, defeated, and depressed, overwhelmed. It's geared Amen. to stop you in your tracks. Geared to stop you in your tracks. Amen. As all spiritual attack <laughs> is, right? Because it's just different forms, but with one main outcome. Amen? All right. Number two, a loss of spiritual desire. Hmm. Difficulty with prayer life, staying connected to other Christians, and maintaining your ministry or work with God. Anybody have that? <laughs> Amen. Sometimes you can't get the right subject matter when you're trying to teach or even when you're trying to get in your Bible study, right? right. You, I know I felt disconnected from God. I felt disconnected from other believers. Absolutely. Did I think it was spiritual warfare? No. no. I just thought it was just life, and that's where I was. Amen? Amen. Subtle. All he has to do is plant a seed of doubt. Amen. Amen? Amen? All right, number three. Physical fatigue and or sickness malaise. Feeling drained and lacking energy. No motivation. Huh. Ooh. Doesn't that just sound like life? Yes. Right on a Saturday, you just want to sit on the couch and not do anything Nothing. that you're drained? Huh? Do you think Amen. about it as spiritual warfare, spiritual attack? No. <laughs> right? Now, if you plan that. If you plan right. that, that's I'm one thing. my Saturday Correct. to be like that. <laughs> but Amen. I can't do that if I didn't do what I needed to do first. Correct. That is very different. Agreed. Very different. Very different. Very different. Now, if you feel that way when you plan a vacation, something's wrong with you. If I didn't have <laughs> the sermon written, right, I can't lay around on Saturday. That's right. That's right. That's right. You wouldn't be able to get it done because you had. And I've had still. some pastors trying to write a sermon on Saturday, didn't finish, and had to get up three o'clock in the morning on Sunday to there finish. You go. Right. Now, how was that sermon that day? Ooh. Probably not that good. Yeah, that's what we do. That's true. Sometimes it might be fiery, right? Know, it, you, you never know. know. You never know. know. You never know. know. But again, thinking I about that. You sometime, yeah. That's true. Yeah, it, it, does, it does, it does yeah. drive you. It does yeah. drive you. But if it comes from that place, then I would see what Bishop is saying, that it is you're not most likely going to have the these spiritual outcome that you would have. You know, if you weren't feeling that way. Amen. Because you guys know when you get in the word and you start it with one scripture and then you find yourself, you've been in the word for like an hour. Right. OK. So. So, so I mean, I, I see both sides of that. Amen. All right. Number four, doubting God's goodness. Mm -hmm. mm. Amen. 
struggling with trusting God to come through you. You may even feel anger towards God for letting you down, believing that God is mad at you and punishing you. Mm. Mm. Sounds like us in our BC days, oh, right? <laughs> right? But kind of going back to that person that has the, the kind of the stuff upon stuff upon stuff upon stuff, right? Had a client not too long ago sent me an email and she's like, I don't know what I've done, but I am seriously under attack. I don't know what I've done. Every, she's like, every time I turn a corner, there's something there and I can't catch a break. break. And sometimes you didn't do anything. And sometimes you do any, didn't do anything, right? You just get hit. Just get yeah. hit. Simple <laughs> as that. So, so praying for her that she will have that, that spiritual release, but something as simple as that. So let's think about the, the world, doubting God's goodness, because this is something that we as, as believers, especially when we've been walking for a while, right, we don't necessarily doubt this, like, unless there's something extreme, like maybe we were praying for a loved one and that loved one passed away, and you know, maybe I could see us being angry with God, amen? That does happen, let's just be honest about it, oh, yeah. okay? But definitely the world, um, because science is one of those things that is always trying to refute God, right oh, his yeah. existence yeah. okay so they kind of put in that same category well you know evil exists so god couldn't exist if evil exists right because why would god a loving god let evil exist but we know that it's much deeper than that and everything like that right but think about that doubting god's goodness okay because we, even though we've gone through the storm or we might be under attack, we don't discount God's goodness. You know, we say God is good all the time. All the time. And all the time God is good. Amen. Amen. So we're not doubting his goodness. Now, our, we might doubt the goodness in our trial. Amen. But we are not doubting him, per se, in his goodness. Amen. Amen. All right. Number five signs of spiritual attack. I have negative, disturbing thought life. Uh-oh. The enemy attacks your mind and the mind is the battlefield. You may be wrestling with anxious, fearful, or worrisome thoughts. Many times people will erroneously think that nobody cares about them. Romans 7. Okay. Romans 7. Amen. So you guys know that there's people that you that you know, family members, right, co-workers, that are constantly negative, aren't Whoa. they? Oh, yeah. Right? And they're I always, they, they, they immediately negative. go to the most negative thing mm -hmm, yeah. that they could think about, right? Yeah. I was like, yeah. how did you get over there? Yeah. <laughs> how did you get way over there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? But that is a that is spiritual attack. And, People, again, don't necessarily recognize that. You might just think, oh, that person is just negative, okay? But it is. It is a sign of spiritual attack, amen? Mm -hmm. So those people that you know that are grouchy and always negative, pray for them. Mm -hmm. Because one of the two yeah. things is, you know, let's, let's just be honest. There's oftentimes there's an aspect of mental health that might be involved in that. Or these people just don't know, don't know, yeah. don't know. and they don't understand that, that how their behaviors, their their words, their actions affect other, other people. people. Always, always, okay. always. Right. always. So they yeah. just are they because they don't understand their own behavior, right? They be thinking about themselves, they be so self-centered. Correct. All they can think about is them, and they don't like it. They don't want it. Right. Me, me, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> and they're usually narcissists, or we would label them typically narcissists, wouldn't we? Oh, yeah. Right? Okay? Yeah. And they are oftentimes quite oblivious to their behavior. Yes, brother. Um, I know you probably, I know I probably heard this probably many times. What is, what, what is uh, a narcissist? Narcissist. Narcissist. narcissist? Yeah. Narcissist. Everything is about them. They're self-centered. Okay. Yep. It's all they about them. About nothing or nobody but themselves. But themselves. Everything has to be their way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and to all me, all the attention. All yeah, the attention. To me, they, they really don't have good feel. You know, feel. 
I mean, you know, they have feelings, but it's all, all about, about them. them. Right, right. And if somebody else gets some attention, <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Okay, now who does that sound like? Oh, Sounds like Satan, doesn't yeah. it? That's exactly who he was. On Twitter. He was so so full of himself, be. right? Because it was pride, you know, because he was so purdy, right? That he's like, Well, I'm I want to be equal to God. That's oh, what it was. That's what it was. He was a narcissist. The ultimate narcissist. The ultimate narcissist. And he took a third of the angels with him, right? Mm -hmm. Think about that. And think about people that we see, celebrities, um, you know, that they're, they are, many of them, not, not dissing on anybody, but y'all understand what I'm saying. And then these people have millions, millions of followers, okay? But then you have someone who's teaching a good Bible study, and they've got five followers, right? Okay. Our ex prayers. Our ex prayers. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. The current oh, prayers. Yes. Right. At the funeral of the queen, they're talking. If I yeah. <laughs> was president, I would. They wouldn't have treated me like that. Oh, and and right. you can hear, I, I and me. I and me. Narcissist. Jackie Harry. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. right. Another that's lady right. got yep. an award. Right. Yeah. Yep. And she got to talk Same about thing. what I was first. And she was right. She I came know. after me. me. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't that. matter. That's you know, right. I didn't know she was a narcissist like that. Well, I mean, but yeah, I mean, that yeah. through spiritual attack, that's right true. there. That's right, because all it takes is that one little time, you know, he's in, he's in your ear like, oh, gee, you, you came for her. her now, right? Why are they talking about her and not me? And not me, amen? Ooh. So, again, y'all, that's spiritual attack. So we think that it's just that person's personality, and over time, it really does become their personality, but it's a spiritual attack. And again, we should be praying for that person, or, or we might, or most likely, probably staying away from them, aren't we? Oh, yeah. But that is a I'll sign of stay away, of, and, pray. Stay stay away and, and pray. Put that on the I shirt, y'all. Okay. Um, stay, stay away and pray. Stay yeah, away right and yeah. pray. But y'all understand, you know, because you know, you know, toxic people. You know, you know, necessarily. The word says we're supposed to be praying for our enemies, well, right? Up and jump off on. But <laughs> but we don't think about where that behavior comes from okay? okay because if we are children of god all right and god is love then we are supposed to be love yes. right so if we're showing a different behavior well it's spiritual attack mm -hmm. does that make sense mm -hmm. right because the world should be able to see us as as his children we should have a, a light just like he has a light. People should be drawn to us, what do they call it? Gravitas, amen? Because we are his children, right? But it's unfortunate when there's a kingdom builder who is negative and has that narcissistic mm -hmm. personality because what that does is it turns people away from God, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, well, goodness, if she's a, or he's a, well, goodness, I don't wanna mm -hmm. have anything to do with that God. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for us to understand spiritual attack. Yeah. So next time when y'all around them, people that y'all don't care about all that much, <laughs> think about them in, in a different light mm -hmm. and understanding that what they're you going through, through. Yeah. amen? And maybe mm -hmm. we can pray for them in a different way or begin to pray for them, amen? All right. yes, sir. yes, sir. Everybody has heard the latest on the bishop in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Y'all ain't heard that? What did he do? Mm -hmm. See when that choked lady? That, that, well, he didn't choke her. He grabbed her by the back of the neck and escorted her out of the church. Yeah. No, so, I didn't hear about that. I didn't hear about that. How did you want to press? What? No. Okay, so um, after that, somebody. he's posted five videos trying to explain it. Really? You can't explain that. So, I mean, one, <laughs> I ain't seen the escort. Man, one of y'all, I didn't get like that. Oh, I know. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, I'm listening to him, and I'm like, man, just shut up. Don't say nothing. Get off the camera. You don't have to explain yourself. You did it. Own up to it and move on. Mm -hmm. So... He's calling them negative while he's being negative. Okay. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, exactly. So right. my question is, if and, and I ain't teaching from the back, 
you. No, you're good. Is he under spiritual attack? Yes. Yes. Or is or is he just a jerk? Is that your question? Maybe both. It, maybe <laughs> both. Maybe both. Absolutely. He may be a jerk because he doesn't know he's under attack. Correct. Right. And then you said, you know, these people in there, they only got like five followers. <laughs> right. Did you just say that? Yeah, I was saying, you know, when you've got a good Bible, Bible teaching teacher, you know, they've got five followers. And I was using the example of how celebrities who are often narcissistic will have all of these followers. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they follow that. You know, but I, I'm, I'm like, how would I handle that? How would you handle that, Bishop? I wouldn't like that. <laughs> Not like that, because after he did that, he said, don't be coming all up in my space. Uh -uh. Yeah. Hey, what? Don't run and and he the one went down and there. He went down there. Yeah, that was crazy. Oh, hmm. Talking about mental. That's what that is. Hmm. Well, it is something else that I ain't going to go into right now, mm -hmm. but... Y'all ask me later. <laughs> okay. We'll ask you later. <laughs> ask the after Bible study, okay. and I'll tell you what I saw. Okay, gotcha. Okay. All right. Huh. And when you're guilty, you tell them yourself. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. You yeah. absolutely do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? But it's a spiritual attack. It is. It, is. it, it definitely is. And the attack will last longer the more attention you give to it. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. You That's sure right. will. Yep, sure I'm will. Not, it sure I've got proof of that with my neighbor. Um, they will stop on the floor mm. and uh, and just stop and tear stuff up and drop stuff in the head from the floor and down to the floor. So they're up there above you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they will torment me and torment me and torment me. Well, that is certainly and an I, example. And I give in to it. Right. Don't give in to it. And Don't give so in to I it. So I tried something different. There you I go. I said, I'm going to pray for them. There, there it is. There it is. There it and is. they didn't stop. They, we were on the phone this morning talking to Sister Curry. Mm -hmm. And they came above us and stopped real hard. <laughs> I said, well, you know, what, you, know what, you know what, Sister Ann, the thing about that is, you know, the devil knows your hot buttons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you oh, have the responsibility, okay? You can react or you can respond. Right. And you, here's the, here's the deal. Sure. I'm sorry. No, I, I don't ahead. want to come in. No, you're good. They don't know upstairs what you're doing. Right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So if they start, they have no idea you're on the phone with Social Security. That's true. Then who does? The devil. The devil does. The devil knows, and he's exactly. like, stomp on the floor. Yeah. That's right. So That's attack. Right. It's and an attack. It is an attack. That freaks me. Yes, That's right. right. You want to get mad at them, That's but right. they didn't do anything. That's right. That's, That's right. Because right. the enemy is all about the vision. Uh, yeah. And my husband needs to work. They start the new being sold. They start the new being sold. Well, yeah. well, well, again, well, again, well, yeah, again, Sister Ann, yeah. you you have you have ultimate responsibility on how you handle that. Uh -huh. Okay, you, you know. So how do you fight back? Because we we get mad at the wrong people. Mm -hmm. So when you pray, who are you fighting? The devil. Hey, that's it. Because <laughs> that's who you should be fighting. That's who you should I be fighting. Think work. Uh, someone one day um, called the uh, manager for, on my behalf because they heard how this man was talking to me. And he, they said, security over there. He said, are you in? I said, yes. He said, are you all right? I said, yes. <laughs> I, didn't, I couldn't understand, but what he was I thought he was about. coming to them. Right. But ultimately, he though, was sent there for me. Right, right. But and again, they heard him tell me. So we just wanted to find out if you were right. Well, that's good. Amen. And uh, and that made me feel so good. Mm -hmm. And they stopped doing a lot of the stuff they were doing. You keep on praying. You keep on praying. You keep on praying. Sister Sister Absolutely. Don't right. let them uh, discourage you and don't let get you off floor. Exactly. Say, That's again do some spiritual attack. That you really don't, you know. Exactly, because you are yeah, the I'm one who's good. responsible. Yeah. Okay. All right. So next one uh, of spiritual attack, sign of spiritual attack. Okay. Number six is thinking about going back to your old yes, lifestyle. Yes, yes. Oh, come on, y'all. Okay. The enemy, right, places thoughts in your mind about going towards your old life rather than moving forward with faith in God, 
right? Okay, that's why it's so difficult for someone who has an addiction, okay? Yeah. And that's why they say it's a lifetime, because those thoughts, the enemy is planning those thoughts every day. If they would, he would plant them every day if you would listen to them, right? Amen. Amen. So that's why, I mean, there's multiple reasons why it's difficult to, to, to get over an addiction, but that is one part of it, okay? Because he is in your ear. He will lie to you and tempt you with the very things you have been delivered from. Amen. So I can't wait to be delivered from the uh, chocolate chip cookies <laughs> and fruit <laughs> snacks. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But now it's funny. You know, as soon as yeah, I just expect it, there's gonna be a truck. You know, like a, a candy truck gonna pull up right in front once I'm once I'm over that hump. Amen. Right? Or a Petridge Farm truck or something. <laughs> I no, but you that last slice of oven burger. Last slice. See? All right. Yeah, that was working. Like, <laughs> now I'm going to some stuff. Now I'm going to some stuff, right? Okay. I'm going to some stuff. Right. But y'all you know. think about that. You know, going back to that old lifestyle, what you used to do, right? Clubbing. And not that there's anything wrong with clubbing, y'all, but you understand what I'm saying. If it's that thing that, that, that brings destruction to your life, okay? It's, it's spiritual attack. The enemy is trying to find a way to get you off track, away from the things of God. Amen? Because if you're focused on all of this other stuff, you can't be focused on praying and fasting and helping your fellow man, helping other people come to the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Amen? All right, uh, another way that you know that you're under spiritual attack, number seven, old emotional wounds from the past Whoa. are resurfaced. Whoa. You believed you had dealt with that area of pain in your life only to find it is cropping up again in your life. It just um, got buried deep. It just got happened. buried deep, right? It was always there. It was always there, right? So your old boo, right? Woo! Or maybe child abuse when you were a kid or some other type of abuse, right? right? But then the enemy is like there, whether he's talking to you or maybe there's someone that you saw that triggered that emotional wound. It could even be a smell of food. Y'all know the food conjures up memories, right? Think about that. The enemy be all up in it. So if you are getting those wounds that are, that are resurfacing, a spiritual attack. You might just think that, oh, well, you know, I just saw uh, my, my boo-boo just because that's life. No, I that's the enemy. Said, I <laughs> right? But that is the enemy yeah. trying to steer that's you yeah. back to destruction. Mm -hmm. Whatever that destruction is, because we think destruction has to be big, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't have to be like the big car that blows up at the end of the movie, does it? No. It could be the smallest of things. It could be overspending on your checking account because you're you're emotionally um, you, too much emotional stimuli, right? You know, yeah. you got all of the, the fees because you spent too much money. Whatever that thing is that that brings you back to where you used to be, Amen. That's Amen. what the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to drag you down. The simplest of things. He's just got to plant a little seed of doubt. Amen. Amen. All right, number eight, battling with feelings of guilt, condemnation, and shame. Mm -hmm. The difficult feeling like you are not good enough, that you, that you do not do enough, and you feel shameful for these things. We were just talking about this last night um, in our women's ministry, how we as women oftentimes, we automatically feel a certain way just because we're women, because we've heard other women saying things about us, right? Society has put titles on us that just make us feel guilty, right? If we're not the right size, okay? If we don't wear the right designer, okay? We don't have the right job. All of those things can bring about feelings of guilt, condemnation, and shame. Why are you ashamed about your job? Okay? I mean, yeah, there's some jobs that job, y'all understand yeah, what I'm saying. Know, you know. But if it's a job that is, is paying your bills, right, and hopefully you enjoy it, you know, and it may not be the president of a company, yeah. all right, but if you are someone who works in the custodial arts or, you know, you, you're a line cook, 
why are you ashamed of that? Amen. Do the best job that you can do on behalf of God. Period. Amen. Doesn't matter. Because there's a bunch of CEOs and other folks in high places that do horrible jobs. Yeah, yeah. And they should be ashamed. Oh, and they no, should no, be no, condemned, yeah. right? And they should feel guilty about the things that they've done, right? Or how they treat people. Amen? But again, that's another sign that you are under spiritual attack. Amen? All right, number nine. Feelings of rejection, belonging, and loneliness seems to be heightened. You feel no one truly understands you, and you do not feel like you belong anywhere. Mm. Amen? Amen? Do you feel that way sometimes, Sister Ann? Especially when it comes to your neighbors, mm -hmm. right? Spiritual warfare, spiritual attack. Again, you have to understand what it is so you can respond accordingly. Amen? Because we get wrapped up in our emotions and we don't tackle it the way that we should. We start taking on the water that the enemy has given us, right? But the God, but God has given us his word to comfort us, amen? And that's what we should fall back on. Not what people have said or what people have done, but what God says about who he is, but also about who we are yeah, in him, yeah, that's right. okay? So I want to encourage you in that, Sister Ann, that when these things happen, that you look at them differently and you'll live a happier life. Amen. Amen. And give God Amen. the glory. Okay? All right? So so I feel a change of heart coming on. Amen? Because I pray y'all never go through some of the stuff I have to go through. Right, right. Y'all can handle it. Right? I don't, don't want to handle it. I got plenty of my own stuff. Yeah, that's right. That's it. That's right. And you have to be prepared. You definitely have to stay prayed up more than any of us, Bishop. I mean, I know that we all pray for you, but you know how to pray for yourself. And you yeah. know yeah. how these different things, you know when you, where you're seeing these, these ten signs that you're on. And you're praying before that. Yeah. But certainly at the beginning of all of these things, you are already saying, well, wait a minute. Here it comes. Yeah. And you already have your, your spiritual warfare tool right here to take care of business. Amen. So when you're feeling rejected or you're feeling lonely, um, seems to be heightened. Okay. All right. There's 7.25 billion people on this earth. So there's no reason for any of us to feel lonely. You understand what I'm saying? Right. We have the Son of God. We're never, never alone. Amen. So, but I know it's not always that simple. However, he's always there holding our hand, giving us a hug. Wanting us to be victorious. That's why he went to the cross for us. But we also understand that a spiritual attack is a part of it. He went through it. Why wouldn't we? <laughs> why wouldn't we? And he went through it on behalf of each and every one of us. So we each get one 7.25 billion <laughs> each, right? Amen? Amen. So be encouraged in that. Okay. All right. Number 10. Confusion over what you believe. Oh. Mm. Is Jesus really for me? Is Jesus the only way? Mm -hmm. These and other confusing thoughts are signs of spiritual okay. attack. Right? Okay. So think about, you know, all the Buddhists. I mean, you guys can choose to be whomever you want to be. Right? right? But I'm not praying to no little, you know, little man with a big stomach. <laughs> right? Because he didn't go to no cross for me. Okay. Right? He didn't, uh, I don't know, he didn't provide me with money when there was no money. He didn't make a way when there was no way. No way. He didn't heal my family member when I was praying and, the, and people around the country were praying. Amen. Amen. But again, think about how many people are confused about who God is. Yes, yes. And we have talked about that, how we feel like God is against us mm -hmm. many times or have felt that way. Right? Because how or why would he let this stuff go on in our lives, individually, but also in the world, you know? 
Think about the 9-11, right? Everybody Hello? that Hello? day. Hello? 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 Yeah, can you back up and say God is what? What did you say, Sister Phyllis? Feeling like God is what? She said feeling, feeling like Feeling like God is against us. Okay. So going back to and good to hear on sister. Amen. So going back to 9/11. I'm just using this as, as an extreme example. So the world at that on that day was connected unfortunately in a very negative way. It's mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, the Olympic games. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's cheering or everybody's praying or everybody is unified. Mm -hmm. Even though it was tragedy, yeah. we and I remember there was an email that was kind of floating around, and it was like this picture of it was Christ, and he kind of had his hands out, mm -hmm. right? And he was kind of standing there, and they had the, the, the two towers, and it was just kind of like him watching over. And it seemed like the world was not confused about who God was. It was like everybody understood for a day. For a day, for a day <laughs> that we were all God's children and we were all impacted by this tragedy. And we all understood that he was who he said he was. Mm -hmm. Because we all had a, a sense of sadness, but there was also a sense of comfort. Amen. At least that was the way that I felt. I guess I can't speak for everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, you know, when I listen to my friends who weren't believers, that day, they seemed to be focused on understanding that there was something bigger than them, and that was Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So those are the, the ten signs of, that you're under some type of spiritual attack, and we understand that there's, I'm sure there's many, many more, mm -hmm. but those are ten that are, that are easy and are, and are descriptive, and we all, I think can relate to those 10 at one point in time, right? That maybe we might not be experiencing them now, but we experience them at some point. So as you go through your day, through this week, whatever, you know, think about these things and also be reminded how does the enemy typically attack us in our physical, and he also attacks our mind. Right? Isn't that Amen. everything? If it's not Amen. our mind, it's our body. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So be encouraged, everyone, to know the signs mm -hmm. that when they come, of course, continue to be prayed up. But when they do happen, again, respond rather than react. All right. Okay? And pray it out. And God's got you mm -hmm. no matter what. We talked about this, um, I think, a week or so ago when Bishop said, well, how many times has God let you down? Mm. Right? He always came through. Always. Always. Maybe it wasn't the way that you wanted. anticipated mm -hmm. or expected, and it wasn't the outcome that you wanted. Mm -hmm. However, he still delivered you. Amen? Amen. 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 So in that, I want everyone to understand but also remember and to be encouraged that the enemy is out there to mm. destroy us. Mm -hmm. We know that the word says he came to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. But we also have to be on our game to use the weapon of the word of God to counteract his foolishness because that's what it is. And he's on his game. Amen. And he's going to come again and again mm -hmm. and again. Now, we know he can't be everywhere at any given time. We know that because he's not God, right? Amen. But when he comes, he's coming give home. him a fight. Mm -hmm. Give him a fight. Kick his butt mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right. And with that, I will close out this evening Bible study, and I will leave it to the deaconess staff to carry us home. Amen? Amen. Thanks, everybody, for being on Facebook and online. Amen? Amen. Great job. Amen. 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 Woo, woo for Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Good words. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi everybody, we close the in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, Father God, thank you for waking each and every one of us up this morning, Father God. Thank you for keeping mm -hmm. us safe during the night, Father God. Father God, as we thank you for the awesome Bible study that was taught by Minister Audrey. We thank you for teaching us. And Father God, as we leave this place to worship, Father God, we pray for your driving grace, Father, so each and every one of us can get to our home safe and sound. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. For the benediction. Yes. Oh, amen. Yes, Bishop. Did we have our international call tonight? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No. Next week. No. Next week. Next week. Okay. okay, for the benediction. Okay. <laughs> May the words of my mouth, the of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, of my heart be, acceptable be acceptable within thy sight. Be acceptable within thy sight. O Lord, o Lord my, strength, my strength and my redeemer. And my redeemer. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good night, everyone. I got, I got, I got to show Bishop something.